Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Dan Strott from Spain. Hi, Dan. How are you doing? Really good. And yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. So Dan is the Global Head of Culture and Strategy at Banco Standard. In this role, Dan leads culture, performance management, and leadership initiatives across 32 countries for 22,000 employees. That's a lot of employees. <laughs> Dan is a culture evangelist who believes that while people are competitive advantage, your culture, the company culture, is the, is the sustainable advantage. So Dan, my first question is in terms of culture. So why company culture is important? And we know the saying that culture is strategy for breakfast. So dealing with 32 countries, how the strategy is changing and how is the company's attracting employees? Mm, really great question, because I'm a very, very big believer that you can have a strategy which is on a scale of 0 to 100, 100 out of 100. Mm -hmm. And if you have the wrong culture or the wrong people in the wrong positions, you're not going to execute it well. And it's always better to have a strategy which is 75 out of 100, but mm -hmm. your culture is 100 out of 100, because it's kind of like a multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. And what I'm observing both internally and externally in other companies is the ones that have really spent time developing a strong culture, yes. giving the employees what they need, what they want, giving them an environment where they can grow are the ones who are most successful. And, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't come as a surprise, but some people are not paying attention to this even today. Yeah. And do you think that COVID kind of pressured the CEOs and employees that oh we need I can be a little bit linear or the flexibility is okay and employees are working. Mm. I think COVID showed us that on mass uh, flexibility works, flexibility at work works. Um, it's a good thing. Obviously now we're seeing in all the surveys that the employees say I'm more productive when I'm working in a hybrid model, when I'm working remote, it is good for productivity, yes. it's good for engagement, people are much happier. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you have happy people, you have great outcomes. And yeah. I always like to tell the story of Southwest Airlines. Yes. You know, this is a, a great company. Um, and, you know, they pioneered uh, turning around their planes in just 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they pioneered that space. It made them very profitable, very efficient. And, you know, when I think about it, there's probably nothing worse than having to clean an aircraft in 10 minutes, nothing worse than having to take on and off everyone's luggage in such a short amount of time. But how do they do it? It's because the employees love working there. Mm -hmm. They really made it fun to work for Southwest. They made the environment great. And therefore, the employees did become so productive that they could yeah. turn around the plane so fast. And it's a great, you know, success story. Yeah. And the truth is, you can't compete when people love their work and their yeah. jobs. It's very important that employees love their work because it's kind of their second home. But one final thing in terms of hybrid. So how does the hybrid culture changes from people working in the office? Because we know that a lot of companies are doing mixed culture. So how can that engagement that you talked about on hybrid is going to be different than people on the ground? Mm. I think, you know, when you have this hybrid operating model, it's really, really important still to maintain some of the face to face meetings. Yes, because we know that teams that break bread together, do activities together, mm -hmm. have off sites and different routines and rituals where they come together and meet yes. are more successful and better performing. So we know that. Yeah. But if you're working predominantly in a hybrid way, of course, you need to keep focused on your culture. You need to make sure the managers are having one-to-one -one check ins, mm -hmm. regular reviews, sharing information. You need to be very clear on which communication channels are used for which topics so we don't overload the employees and those kind of things. So there are lots and lots of tactical things you can do to reinforce the culture. Mm -hmm. But of course, face to face is important as well. All right. Those are great tips, Dan. Thank you very much. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Dan a couple of questions, kind of a journey with us. You can like all the videos, share and put comments. So tune in next time for another great question with Dan.